What's happening, everybody? This is Adi from Gate 7 International coming at you with the first deep dive of the winter transfer window. World Cup hasn't finished yet, but that doesn't keep Olympiacos from signing some players. We're very excited to look at the very first signing of the window for Olympiacos, Rodine Marcelo de Almeida. But first, before we get started, as always, guys, if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe help us continue to grow this red white community if you're watching this video quickly pause it take a second hit that button follow us if you don't already the more engagements we get the more the algorithm picks up the show the more it can spread to other like-minded red and white fans so help us continue with the mission of growing the red and white community now back to the deep dive boys and girls everybody's been very excited about this new signing Rodine from Flamengo, 30-year-old Brazilian right back. Weirdly enough, his physical stature is almost a carbon copy of the player he is replacing, Gonzalo Avila. 5'9", 175 centimeters. Again, that is to the inch, the same height. And his 70-kilogram, 154-pound build is only a couple pounds off of Avila. They're almost the exact same height and weight Really, really, really odd coincidence there, but still hilarious nonetheless. The the player's profile is that of an offensive wing back. Now, a little bit of a difference from Avila here. We have here a very physical wing back, very physical. As you guys remember, Gonzalo Avila wasn't so much. That was something we remarked on on the deep dive on him as well. Uh, similar defensive ability to Avila in that it's not super impressive, uh, but it is masked by his immense passion and aggression, something that we'll elaborate on very soon. Uh, very decent overlapping volume and very solid speed on those overlaps. Again, more stuff that we will get into as we elaborate and look at the player's goal threat and passing and build up characteristics. Dribbling ability is well above average, uh, high willingness to get forward, not the most agile player, but that doesn't affect him. When we talk about agility, we talk about how quickly a player seems to turn direction. And it's not that this player can move very quickly or change direction very fast, but what he does with his footwork that catches defenders off guard and off balance gives him that space. I'll elaborate that again as we move forward. Um, very, very highly elevated generally. Stays very high up the pitch, uh, which I'm sure is yet one of the reasons why we looked at this player and we brought this player in. Uh, downfield upside is highly moderate. You're not going to see a lot of through balls or smart passes as we, as we call them. Not a lot of long balls either. Uh, the consistency in seeing those opportunities isn't necessarily there, but that's not his value proposition. Not super surprising. We are looking at a wing back here. We need a guy that's going to get forward, get to the byline, make those crosses in, and give us a lot of shot contributions, something that we haven't seen a lot of with our wing back positions up until now. Overall, we can say he has very solid pass accuracy, maintains possession quite well, and can be both an engine of possession or an outlet of possession. A nice mix, you can say, perhaps, of Avila and Rafinha. Again, we're going to elaborate uh, as we begin to discuss the goal creation and his goal threat statistics. As always, guys, I do a little bit of some analysis here on the player. For those that don't remember, if this is your first time checking in a deep dive, uh, we are going to evaluate at the base level the player himself. And then we're going to do a little bit of a comparison here. I have compared him to the player that he is replacing, Gonzalo Avila. Now, regarding goal threat, his goal creation, direct goal threat is very minimal. You're not going to see a lot of shots with this player. It's not that we usually see a lot from our fullbacks anyway, so that's not something I would shake a stick at. Not that he's afraid to take a shot. It's just he doesn't get many instances where we see him as a shooter. Again, not too different than what we've seen with Gonzalo Avila. Uh, he's okay in the air, uh, but again... I didn't see a lot of situations where he had to win the ball offensively in the air, whether it was set pieces or otherwise. Not too many instances there, so not enough of a sample for me to, to indicate whether this guy is actually really good offensively in the air or not. Uh, any goal threat that we saw came from shots from distance. Uh, I'm talking about his shots, that is, of course. Uh, they do have power, but I didn't see a lot of them going on target. I mean... He had difficulty keeping shots on frame, especially from distance. Again, not 
anything that's really unusual uh, compared to what we've seen in the past from our fullbacks. Assist creation, again, primarily resulting from give and goes, which would give him some dribbling space and space to take a player on down the wing or on the right side of that penalty box. All of the assists this guy had literally came from a pass or a give and go that gave him some space, a little bit of uh, a little bit of space so that he could run at a defender, make some space with a move, and then play the ball to the player that eventually scored the goal. Uh, all of those assists, whether it was a pass or a cross, usually from the, the right side after he beat a defender or after he was able to get space away from a defender. A lot of runs to the byline, loves drawing those defenders to him. Uh, in some cases, it would slow the play down. I think sometimes it was maybe a little bit unnecessary. But at the very least, we can always say when this guy gets the ball in the final third, it's entertaining. He can do something. He can do something from nothing, uh, something that we're not accustomed to seeing from our fullbacks, especially from the right back position in the last couple of years. So it's definitely something exciting because this guy really can do something, even though at times it feels like it can slow play down. He can really do something from nothing. Uh, looking at the, the statistics compared to Avila. Now, guys, always when I do these comparisons, a lot of times these players are coming from different leagues. So there's different contexts in different leagues. As you guys know, the Greek league does tend to be a little bit more of a defensive league. Uh, there's only a couple teams that play really offensive. The others kind of park the bus more. This is the Brazilian league, which can be a lot more open. It's also very physical, very aggressive as well. A lot of fouls. Uh, a lot of players getting in each other's faces. So bear that in mind. Uh, but when we, as we look at the comparisons of the data, this is all goal creation stats. Um, we see that Rodine has a bit of a lead on Avila, not only in terms of the, the total shot volume, which in the end isn't really that much, but he does have an edge on that. Uh, shot creation, shot assists, we'll say. Uh, again, a little bit more than Avila, not too much more crosses uh almost double the crossing vol volume of avila so this is something that we're we're looking at because again uh crossing volume and product volume we were becoming to be um un not i don't want to say understanding but uh accepting of what avila could offer us well, maybe a little bit more than expected but not what we were have been used to getting from our fullbacks especially during the times of omar el abdalawi and uh cosa simicas uh the the bar was set very high with those players, and it's not something that has been met. But the volume we see here from Rodinay does give us uh, some hope because this is a volume we haven't seen from our fullbacks in a while, and it does give us something at least maybe to be hopeful for in comparison at the very least to the outgoing uh, colleague of his, and that is Gonzalo Avila. Now, moving on, of course, to possession and buildup. As I mentioned briefly, uh, as we were discussing the player profile, this player, uh, he not only has dribbling ability, a little bit of flair, and I'm not talking the flair like step overs. You're not going to see a lot with him. But uh, he, with the way he moves the ball with his feet, he can change direction quickly. Now, some of you may hear that and say, well, wait, you said this guy can't change direction very fast. He's not the most agile player, and he's not. What I mean is he's very tricky with the ball at his feet. You can see when he'll drag the ball with the inside of his foot, cut on the outside, almost like a snake, and he'll do the same with the opposite, outside, inside, inside, outside. It's very interesting to look at. A couple of megs here and there. He's very very, very astute at drawing a lunge in from a defender and going around him in that way. Again, these are things that may not always require a lot of agility to do, but once you get that defender off of his plant foot and you get him kind of on his heel, that's when you can take advantage as an attacking player going forward. So that's the stuff I talk about when I say he's got some great footwork, but not the best agility. He doesn't need it if he's able to, to catch some of these defenders in these positions. Uh, dribble success was in the last calendar year, almost 60%, uh, much better than what we saw from Gonzalo Avila. Uh, he's a very physical guy, as I mentioned before. And whereas we would see Gonzalo Avila losing the ball in these physical duels where people were getting right in on him. I mentioned that on the deep dive with Avila. We saw it when, as he was playing for Libyakos as well, you got in tight with him, you got in his face. He would, you could push him off quite easily. Not the case with uh, Rodney. Rodney is a very physical player. 
And he seems to relish these chances to get in uh, very physical situations. Uh, perhaps it's maybe because of the fact that he grew up in the Brazilian league and he played there all his life. He's used to that, but he does definitely does not shy away from these very, very physical duels. Uh, not at all. Um, I briefly brought up that he, I saw a little bit of a mix of Avila and Rafinha from him because in there were games where I saw Rodne as that, that one of the central figures in build up playing the ball around. And if you guys remember Rafinha, Rafinha was that way for Olympiacos. I mean, he would receive the ball. He would get like anywhere between 50 to 70 touches a game at times, moving the ball, not getting forward, but helping us play the ball forward. Maybe that wasn't exactly what we needed. We were looking for a right back that would overlap. And Rafinha didn't exactly do that for us. Rodney has the ability to be that key figure in build up, the one receiving the ball and playing the ball. But there were so many cases where he was also more than happy to overlap and be the outlet, especially in that final third. Uh, most of his progressive passes came out of the final third. So if he was going to play the ball forward, it was going to be out of the final third. But we saw so much more of that volume. Uh, so much volume, I should say, carrying the ball forward. A lot more, at the very least, than we've seen from some of our fullbacks in the in the past. Uh, Gonzalo Avila, we expected him to do it maybe a little bit more than he did. But again, um, comparing outgoing to ingoing here, uh, Rodine seems to be more than capable of getting forward with the ball of his feet. He likes to do it. And he still possesses the skill set to be an engine of possession if we need somebody to work off of. Um Gosta had mentioned in a previous episode that he was worried that this would be the case of another Rafinha. And even I said the same thing at a base level. But uh, as I wa continued to watch the film over and over again, again, guys, I don't see a lot of evidence to suggest that this is just going to be another Rafinha, a guy that won't get forward or help us progress the ball forward. This guy, I think, has the best of both worlds, at least in a way that we haven't seen in a while. So I think it's something a little bit more exciting. We will see uh more progressive carries at the very least than a guy like Gonzalo Avila um a, a better ability maybe to to possess with our players along uh, just like Rafinha so hopefully a little bit more of the the best of both worlds there and when we look at the comparison between him and Avila we see some 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 similar things in terms of his possession and pass accuracy i mean again almost the same uh, in terms of the volume. And there were games where Avila would see a lot of the ball. So good to see that this is a case where, you know, we don't have a guy that's not used to seeing the ball a lot. This guy does see the ball a lot, and he's willing to take command of the ball. Progressive passes, getting the ball forward, passing the ball forward. They both seem to have similar volume, but where you see where he excels over Avila here, this is in the progressive carries. I mentioned before, this guy gets the ball forward a lot, loves to do it more than double the volume of Gonzalo Avila and almost three times the volume of one-on-one -on -one dribble success. Uh, he's not just better on the dribble. As I mentioned, Gonzalo Avila was under 50% in terms of his uh, dribble wins, but this guy is also higher in that respect and also engages in more one-on-one -on -one duels. He has more touches in the penalty area in the final third, something a lot of you guys complain about. Uh, we get a lot of people on social that say, how come nobody is in the final third? We don't get enough bodies forward into the penalty area. Well, this guy does seem to get forward and seems to get a fair number of touches inside the penalty area as well. So build up wise, if that's what you're looking for, I think uh, I don't think you're going to be very disappointed uh, in that respect. Now, moving on, of course, to uh, the final the final set of data, the final set of uh, attributes, the defensive characteristics. So looking at Rodinay's defensive attributes, I'm not going to say this is the strongest part of the game, and it's clearly not the part of his game that we are really interested in. It, we're interested in the offensive characteristics that this guy has. His ability to get forward, his ability to take some players on uh, and feed volume, feed the ball into the opponent's penalty area. Defensively, as I mentioned, uh, with his offensive characteristics, I didn't see a lot of situations where he was called to the air to try and win the ball in the air. Same thing defensively. When he is called to, the, to, to win balls in the air, he seems okay, but there's not a lot of situations. I felt like I saw it almost as many times him winning the ball and losing the ball. So um, not, again, something that we see him being perhaps amazing with. But he's not a center back, so... Uh, 
perhaps we don't have to pay too much attention to that. Uh, as far as closing players down, guys, his passion and his aggression, as I brought up before, play on both sides of the ball, whether he's got the ball or doesn't have the ball. If a guy's near him, he is full force going in on him, uh, and he's not letting him go, whether it's with a foul or something. This guy will attack players. Uh, not physically, he's not going to hurt players, but I mean, he's going after that ball. Uh, not the most apt at perhaps at reading play and passes. Um, interception wise, uh, I again, I, I didn't see a lot of cases where he was reading a play and intercepting the ball is more his usually his effort that saw him getting to things. Uh, more reactionary, less proactionary, if that makes sense to you guys. Uh, but Perhaps that is made up by for his effort. Uh, his effort level, again, is from what I watched in Brazil, and this is, again, a reason why these fans were so sad to see him go. His effort level is second to none. This guy just exudes passion. I mean, just oozes it on the field. This is It's something unbelievable. Uh, Jose Jolebas told you guys, you know, this team doesn't have a lot of fighters on it anymore, and this guy's a fighter, something we desperately need on this team. Uh, something that may come to bite him in the ass here a little bit at Libyakos and something that I can see being something that fans get very annoyed if, with is how far forward he gets. Not necessarily that it's bad for an offensive thing, but I saw plenty of times where he was so far forward that when the ball was recovered and the opponent got a shot off, he still hadn't finished tracking back yet. Not that he doesn't track back. It's just that he was so far forward that play was, he was just so far behind the play or the counter when it was happening. This is something that, although he didn't get punished by it a lot, I saw at least in the last calendar year in Brazil, it's something I could see context to bite him in Greece or at the very least in Europe, better teams, uh, you know, he's playing for a team that's going to be usually on the offensive end and it's going to be susceptible to counters. It's something that I could see people having issues with or could be problematic at the very least at Libyakos. But we'll monitor this. Nothing I'm going to ring the alarm bells over for now, uh, especially because, again, compared to what we have, it's not like we haven't seen these situations before. So if we do see it, uh, let's just hope we don't see it to a degree that's more than what we already have. Now, comparing his direct defensive characteristics to Avila, we see a little bit of uh, kind of back and forth here with who's better at what. Uh, again, Gonzalo Avila, more interceptions, uh, higher level, uh, possession adjusted per 90. Um, and I, I feel like, again, maybe this could be on the margin. I just thought Avila was a little bit better at reading plays maybe than Rodinay was. But Rodinay's effort was... Not not to say that Avila didn't have a lot of effort, but Rodney's effort level. It's I mean, we're talking Fuster and uh and Holebas level compared to Avila, at the very least, if he plays like he did in Brazil. Um, the amount of defensive duels this guy gets into, uh, again, uh, a, a lot, and he's about the same success rate as Avila, but he's closing players down constantly. Maybe we see, maybe we see that kind of come down a little bit because we're on the ball more in Greece, but I don't think. I don't think it will because I think this guy is going to be right on players. I mean, he when when he's off the ball, he might be cheating forward a lot, but he's on a player and he's man marking him and smothering him. Um, shot blocks, neither one really has that much uh, clearances. We saw Avila with more, but again, if if Rodney's closing players down and winning balls more and playing the ball out more, maybe you're not going to see a lot more clearances. So it's not necessarily something. Maybe that uh, is something we, uh, a statistic maybe we really care about. It could be something um, that's just not as important. Uh, again, aerial duels. I mentioned that I did, that he was okay in the air. I told you guys before Avila was, wasn't good in the air. I didn't think he was good at all. This guy's at least okay. So there, perhaps uh, in aerial duels, we have a small upgrade here. Uh, one way or another, we go from like maybe bad to okay. One way or another, he's uh, he's at least better than Avila in those. He's better than Avila in a couple of categories, defensively at least, which means something, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. So now that we've kind of gone over all of the, the different characteristics, the different attributes of, of the, the outgoing Avila and the incoming Rodinay or the Rodinay that's now here, 
what is my verdict? A lot of you guys always ask this. Do you like this? Do you like this transfer? Is this is this good for us? Is there good value here? Value is always the key word. The key term everybody always is asking me when it comes to transfers. Is there value to be had here? The guy signed a two and a half year contract with us. He's 30 years old. Monetary value wise, again, not much really that's going to be there. Is this a transfer that overly excites me? I'm not going to necessarily say I'm blown away, but I am happy about it. I do think this is a solid transfer, and I do think this is an upgrade over what we previously had. Remember, guys, Gonzalo Avila was signed to be a backup and ended up becoming the starter because of the unfortunate situation and the bad gamble with Sime Versalico. So that being said, we can't necessarily be mad at Avila for what he brought to this team. But this guy... This guy, Rodine, despite the fact that he's a few years old, older than Avila, and say what you want about Avila's potential, and you know maybe we could have had a few more years selling potential out of him. Let's forget that for a second. Let's just look at raw talent from both of them, effort level, and determine whether or not this is an upgrade. This guy has better end product, and I'm talking shot contribution, you know, a goal contribution, all of that, than Gonzalo Avila. Pro there. Possession buildup wise, again, very similar to Avila and better when it comes to carrying the ball and dribbling at people. What have we been missing in this team so far for the first half of the season? We've been missing a lot of players that can make something from nothing and that can take players on consistently. This guy can take players on consistently. He did it in Brazil. And Greece is a different animal. We all know that it's a little bit more defensive, but he at least has more capability in his deep dive than I saw with Avila in the last deep dive. He's physical, which is something that goes for him, especially in Greece. You have to be physical to cope with some of these defenders. They're going to yank jerseys. They're going to pull you, and he doesn't care. He's physical. He can deal with it. Avila could not. And defensively, it's it's just more of the same problems with Avila, but at least if he's going to get forward with us and play the ball forward better, then – what do we care? We already had to deal with those problems. We've already been dealing with those problems. So if this guy gives us more end product in the offensive end, then it's a plus. So all in all, again, guys, I'm going to say this is, for me, this is a good sign. I don't see monetary value coming out of this in the long term. I'd be very surprised if we do get something decent in that regard. But I think this is a solid signing for Libyakos. This is an A signing for me in regards to, uh, well, A signing. This is an upgrade at the right back position. Is it the exact player maybe that I wanted? No. Does the player overexcite me? No, he does not. But I am happy with the signing. I do think this is a step in the right direction. At the very least, a Band-Aid fix for this season and maybe something that we can use to build from in the following season with a, either a young prospect or another transfer to fight for playing time, a younger player moving forward in the following season. So I hope you guys enjoyed that deep dive. I hope I gave you guys some decent insight into Rodin I hope that you guys are excited for the second half of the season. The team has been playing very well in these friendlies. And I hope that the passion, the fight, the work ethic that we see from Rodin in Brazil, the, the reason that the fans loved him so much, I hope he brings that to us in Greece. Uh, some of you I know are worried. We haven't really had the best of luck with Brazilians recently. I hope he breaks that trend and I hope that he does something amazing for us. I hope he gives us a reason, an, another reason to love the red and white shirt. This isn't a red and white shirt. Sorry. It's just habit, but I hope he does well for us. And I hope you guys are now better educated on the player for those of you that maybe knew nothing about him. So until next time, until the next deep dive, I'm Adi. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. We'll see you next time. Go!